Yag-10 is a very different vehicle. It was designed to find aircraft, so it has high explosive shell with manually controlled detonation distance that allows you to set a range when the shell explodes mid-air. But at the same time, it can use powerful armor-piercing high explosive shells to fight tanks. It can be destroyed easily because it's a truck without armor. But at the same time, it can soak up insane amounts of shells that would destroy any other tank. In this video, I will try to make all this chaos to make sense. You will see how it looks to be playing against its main targets, tanks, using armor piercing high explosive shells, and then against planes using high explosive with controllable fuse. But first, few numbers that will give you a basic idea what is Yak-10. Over 6 kg APHE shell is filled with 150 grams of TNT. That leads to one shots. And spoiler alert, try to notice in hit cam when shell explodes. Ballistics is good 800 meters per second. And even if you miss, you can send another shell after a very short 5 seconds reload. Gun's rotation speed is 11 degrees per second, which is slow, but the rotation deserves a separate paragraph and we will talk more about it later in a video. Big crew of 6 comrades helps a lot with survivability, and reload is so short because 3 of them are loaders. This time no stalinium on Soviet vehicle. Truck is mostly made of structural steel, which is even less effective, but it doesn't mean that APHE shells will always go through without detonation. And the maximum speed is 42 km per hour. It is reached fast while on a road, but just like all wheeled vehicles, drops drastically when on sand or snow. This draws a picture of unprotected medium speed vehicle that shoots powerful shells quickly. As soon as you start play it, you will face an issue that you will be fighting all the time. Remember slow rotation? On its own, it's not a big issue. There are other vehicles with similar drawback, but in case of Yag-10, slow rotation will make you suffer much more often. While gun is pointed forwards, it's always elevated upwards because of cabin. And since ground targets are tend to be on the ground, you can't reach them this way, so every time you see an enemy, you must turn sideways to be able to point the gun lower. And this will be your ritual you must perform every time you see someone. If you was bad at predicting where enemies will come from, and you need to aim gun at another side, you have to either spin it all the way through vehicle's back, or get back to cabin, elevate, move it to another side and lower again and gun moves twice slower on vertical axis. This is why it's a bigger issue than on other tanks. Inability to shoot forwards will force you to rotate the gun and experience slow rotation speed much more often. And even if you are standing sideways, the depression of minus 3 degrees will still require you to choose location carefully as because of depression it's more difficult to hit tanks standing below you. Ok, you've put some effort and patience to rotate the gun. How about the shell? Interesting thing about shell. If you look closer at hit camera, you may notice that shell explodes as soon as it penetrates armor. That's because fuse delay is only 15 cm. Unlike most shells, which usually explode after traveling about 1 meter deep inside the tank, sending shrapnel around the explosion here, the projectile detonates sooner and spalling is sent along the tank in a wide arc which is less effective damage-wise because crew and modules located behind others can cover them from fragments. And despite plenty of shrapnel is wasted this way, in practice the quantity of explosives usually compensates this drawback and additionally the reload time is very short for such gun, so your hits despite will most likely cause instant destruction anyway, can be repeated quickly and it's unlikely that someone will survive more than two hits. So yes, once your gun is pointing towards enemies, they are pretty much done. 
Additionally, at these battle ratings, despite there are a lot of different guns, but usually majority of them will shoot slower projectiles. So you have a little advantage when shooting over long ranges, because hitting others is not so difficult. But what about enemies hitting you? Yak-10 is a glass cannon after all, right? Very often you will face situations when enemies shoot you, deal no damage and then you shoot them back and they die. When there is no armor, there is no way for spalling to appear or for APHE shells fuses to detonate. And when there are no fragments, the truck is destroyed by quantity of shells or in case of anything high explosive, fragments rather than size of a projectile. So in most cases machine guns are much more deadly than main gun fire purely because of quantity of projectiles. If you know your opponents and what ammunition they are using, you may decide if it's better to disengage, like if they shoot heat shells, or in cases when enemies are using armor piercing shells you can relatively safely stand in the open and focus on shooting at them. There are not too many vehicles that use heat ammunition as main projectile, so most common opponents that will use AP or APHE will need some time to kill your crew members one by one. Unless of course all your crew members are aligned in a line, but thanks to inability to shoot forward, you will never forget to stand sideways. Yak-10 can survive extreme amounts of hits if you can hide the cabin and leave only your gun exposed. First of all, as long as driver is alive and transmission is not broken, you will be able to escape enemy fire. And second thing, there is no way to reach four crew members near the cabin without high explosive shells. But there are few rare exceptions. APHE shells still can detonate after they hit the gun itself, because it's thick enough to activate fuse. When there are enough explosives inside, some of the shrapnel can reach people on the bench. Another exception, the bench can explode, destroying your whole vehicle. That is because your ammunition is stored under both benches. And even if you take less ammo to battle, they will be stored under bench at vehicle's back. It doesn't happen too often to be worried and hiding the cabin should still be the priority. Surviving enemy shots passing through you also helps to kill them, because now you know their location and your shots will inflict damage. So there are easy ways to survive tanks and it helps to fight them back. Much more dangerous are artillery strikes. As soon as you see the message you should get out of that area. And if you can escape artillery, there are things you can't escape. These things are called aircraft. Any truck is a dream target for planes. If they saw you, be sure they will attack you again and again. And there is a little you can do even despite you have anti-aircraft shells. This is how they work. After you have high explosive shell loaded, you point your gun at anything on the map that is at the same distance where you want your shell to detonate and press rangefinder button. After that, this distance is shown in your scoped view. Now doesn't matter where you shoot, it will detonate either on impact or as soon as that range is reached, if there were no obstacles. That sounds great, now you can damage planes without direct hit. But the problem is, the shell itself is not very powerful and you have to make it explode really close to plane to inflict damage. And shooting at planes with flak without knowing how far they are is just a waste of time since you have other vehicles with bigger rate of fire and faster reloads that are much more effective to fit SPAA role. But what if you know the exact distance, for example in arcade game mode? It is better than shooting blindly in realistic, but still a terrible option. Out of all battles I tried to destroy planes, all of them were destroyed by direct hit and the only time somehow I managed to hit a plane by explosion in mid-air wasn't very impressive. Very uncomfortable controls of setting the explosion's distance is a big factor here. Planes are moving fast, so changes their distance. And you have to aim at objects on the ground to set the activation distance and then aim back at the sky every time you want to update the range. 
but with this gun's traversion speed, situation changes faster than you can adjust for it. Against tanks, in arcade it's a completely different story. Since gun's caliber is very important in arcade, most of the people play heavy tanks that have large caliber guns with a big APHE shells, and that also reflects on their reload speed. And since trucks are killed by quantity and not the size of the shell, keeping your gun sticking out of the cover works great and makes you feel immortal. But that works only at the beginning of a match. Later, opponents will accumulate artillery strikes and ability to fly planes. And be sure someone will take fighter just because they know there is an annoying, vulnerable truck hiding somewhere. Back to realistic. Because vehicle looks like truck, it can blend in with other similar objects on a map. But there are minor shape and mass issues that might be annoying because they can interfere with your intentions to relocate a vehicle. Yak-10 has wings that extend to the sides of a vehicle and when passing narrow streets or moving close to other objects, they tend to stick out too much and cause problems when moving through. And these same objects sometimes cannot be easily destroyed because vehicle doesn't have enough mass to break them. This can sometimes cause even weak objects, like fences, to be serious obstacle when a surface, like a sand or snow, doesn't let you get enough speed to break them. But overall, Yak-10 left me good impressions. I would see it as a vehicle that provides an exchange between two types of vulnerabilities. It's a way to decrease damage from majority of tank shells and increase vulnerability to things that doesn't pose a big threat to usual tanks, like machine guns, artillery strikes and enemy fighters. Since in some situations one or another can be a better option, the truck provides you a choice if you need to adjust to specific situation on a battlefield.